as a father, you know, you're going to come home to the environment that you help create. You got to respect your children and your wife the same way you want to be respected too. What are you doing when you come home? Are you coming home and going straight to the couch and turning on the TV? Because, yeah, I know you, you work the job and you're tired, but mm -hmm. the kids don't know that shit. They like care. They don't care. Right. You got to, like, be present in those moments when a lot of times we don't want to be. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the From Boys to Men show brought to you by the Squire Program. I'm your host, Layden Cook. And today I got a really, really special guest with me. Uh, he flew all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, here to California, specifically to hop on this show. And I'm so grateful because he's all about family, all about being a, a, a good father, a good husband, and overall just a good role model. And you'll be able to tell from the stories he shares today. So today I got a good friend of mine here with me, DJ Walton. How you doing, man? I'm good, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Super excited to be here. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'm glad you made it out. I mean, first of all, like I said, I'm grateful for you flying all the way over here literally just for this. Yeah. Uh, and we're kind of when we were talking about arrangements, you know, whether you said, should I rent a car? Should I get an Uber? I was like, well, it depends on how long you're out here. <laughs> you said, I'm just coming here for this, man. So I really appreciate that, man. It means a lot. And um, I know this is going to help a lot of people just sharing your wisdom and your experience and how you have really built the family that you built. And so um, I want to get into that. I want to talk about, you know, actually a little bit of your um, upbringing first. Sure. So I think it'll lay the foundation. So, you know, with your parents, um, were, were, your, were they good examples of what kind of parent you should be or maybe examples of maybe what not to be? How kind of what was your upbringing like? Yeah. Um, so, I, I, you know, I think my just to, out the gate, like pops left when I was like maybe two, mm -hmm. I think is the story I, I was told. Um, and then, you know, my mother was a single mother. And so I didn't really have any strong male role models in my early years until I got a little older um, and started getting into sports and then having some coaches and um, some some folks like that to look up to. But no, I never had an example of what of what a father you know, was or should be. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, talking to a lot of my friends, it's like the majority of them either A, didn't have one or had a bad one. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, the, the kind of the advantage that I had growing up was I got to create in my mind what I thought the perfect father should be. Right. Um, and so I didn't really model off of anyone or, or personal experience, but I was able to kind of put all those, you know, took a little something from this coach, took a little something from, from one of my friends or, um, and, and kind of, you know, create the model that I wanted to be. Right. And, and so let's go a little bit deeper there when you said your upbringing, cause first of all, I didn't know that, that you grew up with just single mother, same here. Um, but I know how it felt for me growing up and what I felt like I was missing and the lessons that I felt like, I didn't get because I didn't have them there, but you know, kind of what, it, how did that make you feel like growing up without your dad? Like what are some things you struggled with? You know, I, I don't think I like really missed it because I didn't know what it was like to have one. Um, but you know, look, man, now looking back and being a father, you know, knowing how important that role is mm -hmm. in a young boy's life. Um, I'm sure there were, a million things that I, you know, could have used a, a strong male figure in my life at that time. Uh, but, you know, I, I just, I, I kind of picked up a lot on my own when I was younger. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I got, and, I, and look, a lot of it trial and error, got in some trouble. Um, and in eighth grade, I got moved to a, a boarding school um, that was basically like a kind of like a mm -hmm. juvenile detention center. Yeah. Um, and in, in, in that place, it was called Sable Palms in West Palm Beach. And in that place, um, one of my counselors was a, a former basketball player. Uh, you know, six foot five monster of a dude. And that was kind of like my first male role model of like mm -hmm. a dude that he didn't take no shit. Mm -hmm. He was straight up honest. Like everything he said was right out the gate. Like I'm a, I'm gonna pay attention. Mm -hmm. And that, that was really my first experience. Um, so that was eighth grade, however old we are in, in eighth grade. And that's when I was like, Oh man, this is probably what people that have dads, what this is the like. advice that they're getting. And right. this is the kind of person that they can look up to. Yeah. Um, but that was really like my first experience kind of like, realizing that there had been a void mm -hmm. um, up until that point. For sure, for sure. It's tough, man. I, I feel like, and I, 
I can relate to you when you said that, you know, um, I don't know if it's necessary that you feel like you kind of got into some trouble because he wasn't there and, and being rebellious. I felt a little bit like that for me, uh, a little bit more aggressive than than I should have been or, or, you know, whatever. But it also, too, it's like growing up, you're kind of you're trying to learn, you know, sure. where you fit in, everything like that. Sure. Um, but I, I definitely looking back in retrospect, I understand that, you know, maybe some of those things could have been avoided. Uh, had I had him there to kind of keep me in line, you know, because it's no, just different. Yeah, like no, a, no doubt. They, they, like you wouldn't have avoided everything. Sure, you yeah. know what I mean. You and, got a bunch of Yeah, I was, I was fortunate enough to to listen to that conversation with you and your pop, so I got to learn a little bit about you. But, um, and obviously, man, what a what an incredible job you did um, you. without that without that role model there. But, um, you wouldn't have avoided everything, but mm -hmm. for certain, some things might have been a little easier. For sure. Um, and and yeah, that 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 much is clear mm -hmm. uh, as we look at the role that a father plays with, especially especially with young men. Mm -hmm. Exactly, you got to bump your head a little bit, um, but you know it, it's 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 some people, and I understand they're probably going to clip this and be like, oh, there's a controversy, but I don't think that the a mother can calm a, a boy down the same way a dad can. Like there's certain things that you know dad can say that he can get away with and he can get them to actually relax and calm down then when mom does it they know how to manipulate her and, and, and they'll, she'll be a little bit more soft in some cases of course everyone's household and situation is different sometimes the mom is that role yeah but you know yeah uh, i know i know a few that are that are like that too. right <laughs> but but i mean like you know it's there, there's obviously there's going to be some things that a mother just cannot connect with mm -hmm. with a young man uh cannot relate to um and that doesn't mean that single mothers aren't incre can't be incredible role models and I, I know a lot of single mothers that that play both roles pretty damn good mm -hmm. you know what i mean that that can play the role of the father but at the end of the day like you know there's obviously there's there's going to be certain voids there right. um, no matter how incredible they are mm -hmm. um so you know that's that's a bit of an uphill battle for sure for sure no much duffy man so um I want to talk a little bit more about your family now because we talked a little bit about your, your upbringing and, and things. Um, but what about your family now? Like your, you know, you see you guys on Instagram and or so YouTube or wherever else. And you guys look like the dream team. Like it's a, it's a perfect setup. And obviously you guys have problems buying closed doors just like everybody does. Nah, we're perfect. But man. I love it, dude. I nah, love you. Like man. I'm solid. Nah, <laughs> but I do have no for real though. Like on surface level, man, it looks like everything is perfect. Everything's solid. You guys are, you know, um, one, right? You guys are a tribe. And so um, that's not easy to do. That's not easy nah. to do. So for, for you and your wife, you know, how did that kind of come about? Was it in the beginning? You guys had a conversation. Hey, this is how we're going to run things. This is my role. This is your role. Or kind of was it just, you know, you got to bang out the dents and over time, it just, it just gets better. Damn, man. That's a deep ass question. Um, I'll say, I'll say it like this. When, when Jessica and I first got together, um, you know, I, I knew it was something special. It took me forever to like, you know, commit to her the right way. Like I was like a young knucklehead, like trying to figure life out and was like, I knew I loved her and wanted to be with her, but I didn't want to tell her that. All right. Um, so it, it took me a long time to like, like really commit and be like, all right, this is what I want in life. Mm -hmm. um, and when I did, you know, we were so aligned on, on the way we wanted to raise our kids. My wife has a background that would just blow your mind. Like she shouldn't even be here right now. Like she's, she's a powerful, strong woman that, um, is, is just so special, but, but we kind of came together and, and we knew that we didn't want none of our kids to go through any of the stuff we went through. Um, but at the same time, you know, the challenges that we went through growing up and, and some of the tribulations that we endured made us who we are, obviously. Mm -hmm. So we kind of were like wanting to find a way to to strengthen our children when we had them with you know kind of like those risk-free adventure kind of situations where they don't have to go through everything we do but yeah. we're going to instill in them the lessons that we learn from it mm -hmm. um so i think that was kind of like the start I, you know i wouldn't say we like mapped it all out you know um when we had cookie we were we were you know still my, my first my firstborn my daughter jayla when we had her you know we were very much young and trying to figure shit out right um and then like a year and a half later she was pregnant and then we found out they were twins and we were like oh, 
Yeah, like three that. little ones at once. Like, I wow. mean, when it, I was so in shock. Um, this I never told the story. Just my friends <laughs> know this shit. But when when we went to the doctor and the doctor was like, "Do you know what that is?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, that's a heartbeat." My wife's like smiling at the, the, the monitor, and they're like, "Do you know what that is?" And I'm like looking at it. I'm like, "No." She's like, "You don't know what that is?" And I'm like. Oh shit! I looked at Jessica. I was like, our baby has two hearts. I was like, oh my god! Like, so you what, think it's like, what wrong. are we gonna do? Yeah, yeah. She's like, no, man, dude, that's that's another baby in there. I was like, oh no. Oh shit! So we weren't ready for none of that. Right, right. Um, so we had like three pretty much out the gate, and I think you know us trying to figure out together like the you know one little bit of advice i can i can offer because times were so hard in the beginning with with three little ones and mm -hmm. you're trying to figure out life and you're young right. and immature and doing dumb shit and um you know one thing that i think we really built our love and our tribe on is is respect mm -hmm. so there was you know we we got past the point of you know we just lifted each other up Right. And that that's kind of that was like the 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 start of when I in looking back that was like the start of having a healthy relationship mm -hmm. and between and our, you and you and between her. me and my wife right, like right. starting there starting right. there with the respect factor never yelling at each other mm -hmm. never cussing at each other um, and and never like demoralizing or demeaning each other right um, and that shit sounds easy yeah but. When people struggle with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it when everything's crazy, you don't have no time, you're not having slept good and the mm -hmm. kids are crazy and you need a break. Like people start, you know, they they get at each other. Right. Um, and it's not to say we didn't get at each other, but when we did, it was just with a with an underlying foundation of respect. There's ground rules. Yeah, exactly. Right. So right. And, and so that really, man, like that was such a it, it was almost like the only thing that like kind of kept it, the bond so tight and so strong. Mm -hmm. And that, and then looking back, I feel like, you know, our kids saw that, mm -hmm. you know, they really saw the way we communicated and our kids never thought we fought. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't, like if we were in a disagreement or argument, it was like, it was handled just the way you and I are talking right now. Right, right. It wasn't with the yelling and screaming and, and it was right. none of that. Right. Um, and so, you know, it, it, it kind of forced everybody to kind of come together. And we we realized really quickly that that was special, mm -hmm. that the way that we communicated with each other, right. the way we held each other up and supported each other was special, that mm -hmm. other families didn't always have that. For sure. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you start to realize, and, and then that is the thing that snowballed. Mm -hmm. and that And then from there, we wanted to be like, all right, you know, we we got the love down, we got the respect down, we we think we got the you know, where we're going down. Now it's like how can we build each other up more? Right. Um and how can we support each other to make sure that everybody's living the best life. Exactly. So it started kinda like, you know, small, small steps and then and then now I think it's like uh now now, you know, we call ourselves a tribe for a reason. Like, mm -hmm. you know, that that closeness, that bond, um, is is so special because like you know we all share that and that was that was what we fostered in our in our home right that's beautiful man how long have you guys been together you and your wife uh we've been married almost 20 years now um awesome. 19 and, and some change and uh i think we've been together like 25 that's awesome man. yeah that's awesome yeah that, that i can't wait to hit that man today is actually my my six-year wedding anniversary with my, with oh, my wife right and so, on, right on, so i can't right wait on. to be able to you know, say that i hit the 20 yeah. year mark you know yeah um, so it's a beautiful thing man shout out to you guys Congrats, for that bro. so and being Thank such you. a great example for people where you can they can see and say it can be done like it's yeah. not just on tv it's not just like you know these made-up characters yeah, like yeah, yeah no yeah. it really can be yes, done absolutely yeah. it can be done and yeah. and and on the flip side of that what you touched on like with the instagram shit like it's hard too mm -hmm. like don't get it twisted like it's, yeah, yeah. it's hard it's rough man like right. as your kids go through different ages and phases like mm -hmm. your relationship changes and you take on different roles and For like sure. so that causes tension and friction but if you but if it's like based out of those principles um y'all can get through anything and like you know it's uh that's the only thing that i want to really underscore it is not easy to be in a relationship with anybody even the perfect right. person on the other side right um because i think i'm amazing but i know <laughs> jessica be like man you, you like you know we all have a handful like, yeah. you know what i mean like so uh, you know it's it's just it's not easy it's hard right. but it takes work just like anything else that's worth anything 100 percent. i love it man so i want to go back just a second because one thing you touched on you said that you uh allow 
your your kids to basically not allow maybe that's not the right word but you said that you kind of have to have them go through things without having them having like real danger and so i wanted to touch on that because i'm sure there's some parents watching where they're like well how do you do that like how do you let them navigate some things by themselves or maybe they feel like they're doing it by themselves but you're still able to watch them and kind of guide them and 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 you know control diversity i guess you could say yeah that's a good that's a good question i think you know (laughs) That part is that part's tough. I mean, like, you know, going through some shit is the best is the best, right? Like mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. the best way to learn a lesson. Yeah. Um, and so I'm not saying that we've totally avoided that with our kids. You know, sometimes they're going through something that we can easily jump in and fix and we're like, right. well, let's see how this plays out. Right. Um, so, you know, not being what do they what do they call them? Um like, helicopter, uh, helicopter yeah, 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 parents yeah, yeah, yeah. or helicopter moms or dads or, yeah. you know, people that rush in and try to fix something that's, that's immediately. Yeah. So I think what now, now, you know, my three oldest, um, my twins are 17. My daughter's about to be 19. And they're at such a cool age right now because, you know, I get to I get to really get from them what they think before mm-hmm. I offer any advice. Mm-hmm. You know, when they were younger, I, I would, I would, hey, this is how you do this, son. This is how you do this. And 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 now it's like, well, how do you think you should handle that? Right. Um, and 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 just just that alone, and seeing the way that they process, seeing the way that they respond to certain things, because I, I mean, I believe one of the keys to life is how you respond to shit. The difference between good or bad most times is the way you respond to something. Right. Um, so really kind of in their upbringing, just figuring out how they respond. And if and if you notice that it's a response that is impulsive or out of emotion or which is going to happen when they're younger. Mm-hmm. But but the more you you see that child, the more you can kind of steer them in the right way right. while they can kind of figure it out themselves. Right. Right. Um, and 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 the biggest part of that is being present mm-hmm. like seeing it unfold and mm-hmm. being there for the challenges but not rushing in to fix it exactly rushing in to be like what's going on man how you feeling mm-hmm. and having that conversation about what they think they should do mm-hmm. and yo like your kids will surprise you man like yeah you, yeah. you, if you just open up that door yeah. and give a second, give a beat breathe on that like what do you mm-hmm. think you should do man they'll say some shit that you're like Damn. Okay, well that I wasn't even gonna say that, but that's a really good idea. <laughs> right, right. Um, so so I think, you know, I, I think that's been kind of like a bit of our secret in in making sure that they're learning their lessons and going through this stuff, but without having to suffer through any of like, you know, major, major things that um you know, that maybe my wife or that mm-hmm. I did. Right, for sure, man. That's awesome. There there's one thing, one example. I was watching, uh, you know, all the content, obviously preparing for this interview and listening to, you know, interviews that you guys have had and, and just kind of learning more about you. And there was one thing I thought that was awesome. Um, and I would never, I would definitely not consider this a helicopter parent, but there was one thing where you said uh, when they the first got into acting and everyone was like, you got to move out to L.A., you got to go to Hollywood because it's going to be too far to, you know, travel back and forth from Atlanta. Like hell no, I'm not going out there. That's that's not us at all. Like I don't yeah. want out there. That's not we're not Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, it's fake yeah. out there. This no not so. To California. I know. Like I mean, we're in Cali. I got but, Cali, Cali native. So, but, but I get it. Yeah. I get it. So there's some things where it's like man, you have you, to be you able dug to that shit up. I don't remember, but but that is something I say. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, we weren't. You know, like and that's another thing too. Is just not letting shit like you know get to you to the point where you feel like you got to be a certain way or live a certain way, or act mm-hmm. a certain way just to fit into some, you know, right. fake industry that, right. you know what I mean? But, right. um, but yeah, yeah, man, I think keeping, keeping the tribe in Georgia, um, and keeping us grounded, you know, we got a great community. Mm-hmm. We got, you know, we got a lot of people there that care about us and that support us. And, yeah. uh, so yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's been really important for us. And I think it's funny cause, you know, one I think wants to move to San Diego one day. Yeah. But I'm I'm trying to talk to them about the taxes, LA, though. man. Yeah, Definitely exactly. Yeah, LA. yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely not LA. <laughs> um, Make sure it's not LA. But I think I think I convinced Cookie to stay in the Atlanta area. Yeah, so. right on. And man, then Jaden, who knows, man? He'll probably he could go anywhere. That kid's a, a, a he's gonna be a global superstar, That's just him. man. I yeah. love it. I love to hear it, man. So, I mean, and my my mind kind of went down a rabbit hole when when I heard you say that because there's all kinds of different things. Uh, just that one that one phrase alone, like you know what, we gotta stay here where we're grounded. We have a great community and everything. 
Uh, there's all kinds of different topics we can go through there. But I just thought the one question that came to my mind when I heard that was, you know, what are some qualities about your family that you guys have that you were trying to protect, you know, from being messed with or tampered with? Mm, that's a really good question. Really good question. Mm. Um, I mean, first and foremost, obviously, privacy. Mm. You know, it's like, you know, ha you know, being having private time and, and not having to always be, you know, prepared to be in front of a camera or on somebody's, you know, iPhone or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I think privacy was the, f the first thing. Um, and And then it's like, you know, I think our way of life is uh, it's kind of simple. Like we, you know, we take simple pleasures and in, in being together and, mm -hmm. and, and spending time together. And, you know, like we don't get caught up in all the, like the bougie shit or the drug scene or the, this scene. And that's kind of hard to avoid when you're a young mm -hmm. person with a following sure. in a major Industry. city, like, like yep. LA. Um, and I just think that, you know, putting yourself in good situations where you, you know, you can succeed, um, just based on the environment is important mm -hmm. too. Right. Um, so I, I think, you know, it's, it's probably, you know, it's not, I don't know if it's the coolest answer, but it's just practical. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But it means something, man. Yeah. Um, in that same, uh, interview or podcast I was listening to, you, you talked about, certain things that you guys prioritize as a family to keep that bond. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this is huge because actually, Lauren, earlier we were talking about it, we were having the conversation um, talking about how important it is to sit down and have dinner. You mm -hmm. know, it doesn't have to be every single night, but just that's, I feel like that's not even a thing anymore. You know, like it, it, at least not many families do it. And so I know that you touched on that. And so um, was that always a thing or practice for you guys? Or is it just like, you know, something where you saw always. that maybe over time got no, more important? No, not always. That's always been a, a priority for us to sit down together and, and have dinner as a tribe with no phones mm -hmm. and, you know, conversation and um you know my kids like to clown a lot so they'll you know that's when they that's like the make fun of dad or mom time is like <laughs> dinner time and we welcome yeah. it we right, welcome right. it but it's a good time um you know I, that's just it's been so important i spent a long time in the early part of my career traveling so much mm -hmm. um and so i missed out on a lot when they were really young so you know when i started coming off the road it was like that was like priority number one is making sure that we have family unit time mm -hmm. so so yeah no that's always been like that yeah, for sure yeah i mean we you know last night you know right same yeah, thing exactly you know? yeah exactly man what are some other things that you that you guys feel that you do that um maybe isn't unique to your community because i feel like maybe in the community which is one of the reasons why you want to stay there is a lot of people do that around that area yeah yeah but super, in general, super family energy where right, we're at yeah right so but in general like what are some things that you think that, you know, families should be doing more to strengthen the bond with their with their kids besides like eating dinner? Like what are some things that come to mind for you? So I just, you know, I just had a, a talk with my, a buddy of mine like a couple of days ago and I was asking about his daughter and he's like, you know, you know, now she's into different things. And, and you know, I feel like, you know, the only kind of time we have like together is like when she she, she has a, she has a new puppy mm -hmm. um, and she loves walking the dog. She's like she's like a great caretaker for this dog. Mm -hmm. And and he was like and I'm like, man, go go do that. Yeah. Take walk. take like three walks a day with her. You know right. what I mean? But whatever it is, like mm -hmm. find that time with each one of your kids. And and, and that's the other thing, too, is like the family time is cool where you got the whole tribe there. Mm -hmm. But then you also got to make sure you're carving out. Yep individual time so you know with cookie like you know i know every morning at 8 a.m i'm gonna spend an hour and a half with her working out mm -hmm. that's my workout partner mm -hmm. so i know like during that hour and a half we're gonna get you know we're gonna cover a lot of ground it's on going that down. you know what i mean yeah it's going <laughs> down so we're gonna get right and yeah. and i'm gonna know everything that's going on in her life right right um with Jaden, it may be going to the cages or going to the field to throw and obviously with one i get my time in um you know boxing twice a day mm -hmm. um and then with 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 Dalo, um, you know, you know, he's into baseball, but he's also into video games and and uh, you know and stuff like that. So I, you know, I'll sit there and mm -hmm. watch him, not knowing what the hell's going right. on, <laughs> but watch to, him with yeah. Fortnite or or right. Spider Verse or whatever it is. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm like, yeah, that's good. I'm paying attention, like, here with and you. we're talking, and and so I think that individual time is important. But I think as a parent, a lot of times, you know, there's a hesitation to meet 
the kids where they're at. Mm -hmm. They want to like they want to bring them into like some middle ground or where they right, are. Right. Like no, go to what they got going on. Right. If they're into you know lacrosse, man, go get you a stick and learn how to throw that thing for back real. and forth. I don't know how if that's. I know. Yeah, I know like, the term. Yeah. Whatever it is, the most random. You know, yeah. whatever they're into, like find a way in to right. that. And right. go meet them where they already are, right. because they're they're disarmed there. They're that's what they enjoy doing. They're more mm -hmm. likely to open up to you in those environments. So, mm -hmm. um, I think that's you know that's good advice about you know making sure that you know you're getting your time in and and meaningful time, impactful time too. Exactly, and it's going to mean so much to them too because you're meeting them where they're at. They're they're already passionate about this thing. Like it sounds like, you know, it's awesome too when you get to connect on something new where you guys are both learning about. Yeah. Um, but the easiest way is to go where they're passionate about. Like, you know, Facts. some sport they're passionate, a dog, a pet, yeah. something like that. You know, they're already excited about it and, and so they're in a, a good mood and then you get to ask them questions, they light up and so yeah, exactly. uh, it's, yeah. it's a beautiful thing, man. It, it's so, it's almost like, it's so simple, but not many people are doing it. Mm. You know, so that's some that's good true. advice for sure. So I want to talk to you specifically about you know dads now and being a father because we talked about the family and the tribe together but I think it's a perfect segue when you say okay but you got to be individual with your kids as well so talking about fathers as individuals um, let's say that somebody's watching right now a father's watching this right now and he sees the the love that your family has for you the respect that they have for you and he's maybe not 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 getting that right what are some some things that that uh maybe you do that maybe garner more respect Cause there's a lot of guys in their household where they feel like you know they come home and it doesn't really matter they just nothing stops nobody's excited to see him they kind of just you know he works his ass off to make the money for him and he feels yeah. like he's doing everything he can but for some reason he doesn't feel like he's getting the respect that, that he feels he deserves you know what are some things that, that that you do as an individual like as a father specifically where you're like man this is i feel like this really helps you know uh, them appreciate me yeah, that's a that's a good question. That's a tough one too, because I actually hear that a lot. Um, you know, I, I think th I think there's some accountability in that. Not in every situation, but in a lot of situations, I think there's some accountability where you know, as a father, you know, you're going to come home to the environment that you help create. Mm -hmm. um, so if the expectation is, you know, that you, there's going to be this immediate sign of appreciation as you walk through the door you have to create that environment to happen it's not just going to happen so you know you talk about respect and i, I touched on this earlier about respect but you know you gotta you gotta respect your children and your wife the same way you want to be respected too um and and i had to learn that by the way you know what I mean? That's not just something I like. I, I, I like I, I really had to learn that and, and go through my mistakes and do my dumb shit and then realize like, oh, OK, you know, like I, when I when I was first, when the twins were young, I was I, I was so impatient. I mm -hmm. mean, frustrated at every single thing they do. I wouldn't understand why they were acting like, you know, crying about shit. I'm like I'm like I, I was just I was I was like a hothead with them. Yeah, it's tough. Um, and yeah, but just because it was so much, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's like, yeah, one's like, crying and the other one's sleeping and then vice versa. And then, yeah. <laughs> so no sleep, no sleep. So like I had to like learn that. And then really it was like kind of changing my approach with mm -hmm. them. And instead of getting mad at every single thing that they were doing, which would only just push them away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was it was like I had to kind of check myself and be accountable for my own actions first. So I think. You know, and none of this shit happens overnight, by the way, too. Right, right. Um, so I think, you know, the, the main thing is for a, a guy in that situation is, you know, what are you doing when you come home? Are you coming home and going straight to the couch and turning on the TV? Um, are, are you coming home and 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 contributing to whatever, you know, your wife got going on? Or are you jumping right in to help the kids with their homework or play catch with them? Or like, what are you what are your habits when you get mm -hmm. home? Right. Um, because, yeah, I know you, you work the job and you're tired, but mm -hmm. they, the kids don't know that shit. They don't, like, care. They don't care. Right. So you got to like, you know, you got to like be present in those moments when a lot of times we don't want to be right. we want to grab a beer and chill and and, and, out, and disconnect um, but that's not if you want to be a good father mm -hmm. that ain't that ain't gonna work it's not gonna work yeah. so you have to be present like you know I, I tell my buddies all the time like don't worry about being perfect like just be present just mm -hmm. be there and if you don't and, and you know 
if you sit down, man, like, and, and you can do something chill. It don't have to be, you don't have to, you know, you can sit there and build some Legos. Right, right. Whatever, man. Like, I'm, I'm just attention. saying, just, it's, it's figure out what your habits are. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm assuming that in most cases, fathers that don't have that respect, not saying there's not situations where it's all bad. Sure, right? sure, yeah. But in no, and, and I'm sure in a lot of cases, like, I'm sure the, those those dads got some accountability too and, and their saying? habits when they get home yeah. and the way that they're, you know, they're greeting their family too as they come through the door. 100%, man. You nailed it. I think, you know, if, if you know, a dad wants to call himself the quote unquote leader of the household, head of the household, whatever the foundation, whatever title he wants to give himself, that also comes with a lot of responsibility on man. your own hand, you know, on your own part. You know, it's a lot of accountability, like you said. Um, if you expect your kids to comport themselves in a certain way, you should be doing the same. And so it, it's it's a lot of that for sure. But then we think, you know, because we're the parents, well, I could do it. I'm an adult. You got to act right or whatever because, you know, you're trying to teach them something. But they don't really care what you're telling them. They're going off of what you're doing. And so Bro, yeah, that's that, crazy. that is yeah. so man, you so, you're so mature, man, for your age, by I the way. Like, yeah. uh, man, that's so true. Like mm -hmm. you have to. I, and I'm a, this is an understand. I'm gonna underscore this. You have to lead by example, because I got some really good parenting advice when I was younger. Uh, it didn't click in until later, but it was. Um, I'm gonna mess up this all, but you'll get the gist. Yeah. Thirty three percent of 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 kids um, are gonna be affected and learn by what you tell them. The other thirty three percent. Um, comes from what they experience outside of the home, mm -hmm. um, which is like their environment, their school, their their team, their whatever, right? Their friend group. And then the last 33% comes from what they see when you, when they don't think you're look when you don't think they're looking. Right. So when you're not watching, they're watching you. Mm -hmm. So your behavior and the way you respond to things, the way you handle situations, the way you treat your wife, the way you treat your friends, the way you talk shit about somebody behind their back, but then you're cool in front of their face, right. your kids see all that. Everything. They're in your home, right? They're, they're in the living room and you think nobody's listening to you on the phone in your bedroom. Mm -hmm. so, so you have got to lead by example. And right. when I figured that out, <laughs> When I was old enough and mature enough to figure that out, it became like a big part of my my character as a person mm -hmm. because I wanted to be able to tell my kids something and stand on it right. in such a way that they know like Pops is really about that. For sure. So you hit it on the head, bro. Like mm -hmm. leading by example is the most important thing I think you can do outside of loving your children right. is leading by example. 100% because there, there's so many times that we think that we think because we're adults, we're slick. Like we can get away with some things. Ah, oh, nah, she didn't see that. I have they somebody that, that they see everything. I, I watched it play out a, a little bit ago, a couple months ago. I have somebody, a friend um, that's going through a divorce right now. And uh, she's, you know, venting about, you know, her situation to, to my wife and I. And we're listening to her. Her daughter's with her and she's on her phone playing whatever game on her phone. And I can see when she brings up you know, her, her now ex-husband's name, the, the daughter stops like playing what she's doing and she just looks up with her eyes. She doesn't look up with her head, she but she just look and I'm yeah, like, she I'm looking, I'm telling trying to tell her like, yo, let's, let's cut this conversation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they're listening, man. I'm telling you, you just gotta, yeah, you, you gotta lead by example, like you said, and, and they're paying attention to all that. They think it's okay. If you're doing something like, well, I can do it too, you know? And so, um, and then oftentimes too, the fact that they're kids and they're immature, they're not going to be able to even handle it the way you're handling it anyways. And so you're, right. you're, you're just giving them bad advice when you act that way. So Right, 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 exactly. That's crazy, man. So, um, but anyways, you know, back to um, you and, and, and the awesome dad you are with your with your kids and, and, and everything. Um, you know, obviously you're saying that this has been a journey. This has not been something that, you know, you, you just, it happened overnight. You had a lot of examples. You kind of, you know, took different pieces from different people and different examples. Um, what are some ways that you did that? You know, because there are a lot of people that are watching, a lot of men watching this episode right now where they're like, well, I didn't have my dad. You know, uh, I didn't have a mentor. You know, what are some things or some ways that you kind of like you built yourself, like you kind of put this together? I mean, a, a lot of trial and error. And and I and I think the 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 thing that was like underneath it all was my desire to be a good father. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have that, 
then you're not really going to care about the mistakes you make yeah. or you're not going to really like stress certain things if you're just like comfortable being the way you are. Mm -hmm. But but I, I started with a desire to get better and I'm still on that journey where I'm like, where growth is very important to me. Like I'm trying to, I, I think I'm a really good husband now mm -hmm. and I want to be an even better husband in 10 years from now. Right. I think I'm a great father right now, but I want to be even better 10 years from now. So so this desire for growth and to get better and to to right my wrongs is is like I would say kind of step one. You know what I mean? If I fuck up, you know, and and my wife tells me that, mm -hmm. um, whether it's something I want to hear or not, I'll I'll take it and then I'll Sorry. I'll think on it and then I might distill from it what what I really think it was, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> right. But 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 yeah. that that motivation to 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 be better, um, and I you know. Thankfully, I've been like that with my with my professional career, with everything I do, because I'm just I'm I'm just trying to grow. I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to. So I think if you can kind of take notes on where you're making mistakes and actually apply those things to get better, listen to your kids, listen to your wife. We mm -hmm. man, we get so prideful when it comes men. Right. We get real prideful when it comes to our kids. Mm -hmm. Let them tell us some shit that they think we're not doing right. We're right, right. But man, like opening up those conversations mm -hmm. may not be some shit you want to hear but you will learn you got to do it you will yeah. if you think you're doing amazing sit them down and be like, how you think i'm doing as a father yeah. and they might say some shit you ain't even think of they might say <laughs> yeah. some really dumb shit too like right. you know like well you know you never get the wild cherry capri sons you only get the mango <laughs> when you go to like and then you're like all right, right. man i'm not I'm, you know like, nah, yeah, let's yeah, get yeah, back yeah. on topic <laughs> so like but 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 there's but there's lessons and all those little things so mm -hmm. i would say that's step one i think um the other thing too is, you know, managing your own expectations. Um, you know, I had expectations when I had my twin boys. I was like, yes, I was like, oh man, I'm about to have me some badass boys. Yeah. You know, take over the world together. Yeah. Like, and it's just it wasn't like that. You know, like little boys are emotional, and right. and they, you know, they 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 respond to things in a way that as a grown man, you're like, why are you responding like that? You know, mm -hmm. but like. You just got to learn, man, like everybody matures at their own pace. And Lord knows, bro, we as men, we mature slow. Like <laughs> most of us, for real, like the majority of us right, mature right. really, really slow. And it takes right. us time mm -hmm. to figure shit out. Right. Yeah, I love the fact that you said that too, man. <clears throat> Excuse me, because there's so many guys that feel like they have to have it figured out. 100% right now off the gate. Mm -mm. It's not going to happen like that. Never. It, will it rarely happen ever like happens that. like that. It rarely ever happens like that. So. <clears throat> Excuse me, I know that advice is going to help a lot of people because um, they're figuring it out on their own right now. They're trying to learn how to mature, how to be a better dad, how to be a better husband, how to, you know, how to, how to effectively lead. Like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. All these different things, man. And, and to see somebody like you in an example um, showing them they can be done, this is like motivation to them. Like, okay, Where? cool, I could do the same thing. Yeah. Um, so, on that note, speaking of just fathers in general, uh, let's say fathers in America, just because culturally this is where we're at. Where do you see um, fathers nowadays kind of dropping the ball? You know, some things, because I know you talk to a lot of different dads. You get a lot of different messages on Instagram about people probably asking for advice. You know, what are some some common things where you're like, man, I wish dads would get better at this? Man, it's probably a long list, man. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not here, for, you know, to, to, to pass judgment because we all got our shortcomings. But, you know, I, I think, like I was saying, that, it's kind of twofold, like just not being present enough. Um, and and present doesn't mean like always, you know, sometimes just like opening opening up a door so that they know that they can come to you in an uncomfortable situation has to be earned. Sometimes like you could say, oh, no, they know they can always come talk to me about anything. Mm -hmm. But if, if that if that relationship has not been like proven like that then you can't expect them to come to you in those situations. So like, and, and I think that starts with just being there. And, mm -hmm. and because if you're not there, especially kids today, man, kids today are like, you got to decode shit to find out what's going on. Like, right, right. you know what I mean? Like they, they, so much of their life is in these phones mm -hmm. um, that you may not know. They could be going through some serious stuff. You don't even know about it. I have no idea. Um, but everybody on their Snapchat group knows they about know. it. They know. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, so you just, you have to be available to them and there and present and know what's going on. I think it's really, it's really like, that's kind of like how how it begins so that you can build that relationship. And I, and I have noticed that, you know, like 
I'll, from an outside perspective, I'll observe fathers that are showing up. And this is the interesting thing, too. Like, there are fathers that are showing up to stuff. So in their mind, they think that's being present. Mm -hmm. um, but just showing up sometimes isn't enough either. Yeah. Um, it's a great start. And it's a great start for people that are trying to, like, you know, just They're figure trying, stuff right. out. But that next phase is like, instead of just showing up, it's like really be involved and get yeah. involved and be try engaged, to yeah. be engaged. And, um, you know, showing up and being on your phone ain't showing up. I was just about to say that. Yeah. I was just about to say that. Because imagine the pain of, you know, uh, your parents are there, they're cheering you on at your game, and you're, so you're excited about that. But you score a goal or something, you look up in the stands and they're on their phone. Yeah. Like, damn, they missed it. Word. And so it's crazy. So that's that's something like, your brain will take a screenshot of that, man. As a kid, you'll grow up and you'll remember that. It'll stick with you forever. So yeah, it's, it, these are things you got to think about for sure. So really being engaged um, is, is, is critical, man, for sure. Uh, man, honestly, I, I have so many different questions. But I know <laughs> we're going to do a part two to this. Um, so I want to just let you know right now, father to father, man to man, I just want to say thank you, man, for um, being the example that you are for not even just, you know, people like on Instagram, the people that follow you, but for me, you know, people that are watching you in person, I get to see a father doing his thing um, and, and leading the way that I feel a father should. And uh, it's just awesome, man. It's awesome. You saw my story. And so you, you, you understand that this means something different for me. Uh, when a father really shows up and is there for his kids, I just think it's awesome, dude. And and, and really, it's what it should be done. Um, but you can tell that statistically wise, it's like sometimes it's, it doesn't it doesn't work out that way. There's a lot of dads who are not doing this, and so thank you. Brother. I want to say thank you. That, that you means know, a lot to me, man. For, sure. for you, to, for you yeah. to share that. Thank you. Yeah, 100 percent, man. So, anyways, I appreciate you coming out, man. Hell this yeah. is awesome. We got to run it back. Um, and, uh, and first of all, before I let you go, though, where where can people find you at? What are you promoting right now? You know, kind of you know, let the people know where they can find you. Uh, they can find me on Instagram at, at Onward Nation, but, um, you know, right now, I'm, I ain't promoting shit. I'm just focused on, on, on getting this tribe down the road that everybody's at a place where they got big things like right on the horizon. So, so I'm, I'm just focused on them right now. That's real. Yeah. That's real. Awesome. DJ, I appreciate you, man. Thank Thanks you, for coming out. Awesome. So guys. Man, do us a huge favor. Share this video with somebody. Um, share this video with a with a father uh, that you feel maybe needs to see this, or maybe somebody who's a, he's an expecting father. He's his kids on the way, and he's kind of nervous about how he's gonna do this. Uh, share this with that person. Uh, drop your your comments below. Engage with us. I just want to kind of know your thoughts and feedback, and who you think we should have next on the show. So until next time, we we'll see you later.